Hello, this is Broyer, and welcome to yet another First Impressions video for Civilization VI Gathering Storm. Today we're going to be taking a look at Canada, which is a long requested civilization to be added to the civilization, you know, kind of list of civs. Uh, and so I'm really, really glad to see this one in the in the mix finally. And uh, I think it's going to be a really, really awesome one with a lot of really cool, uh, kind of very unique features. So uh, let's get into the video and see what we got. Wilfred Laurier leads Canada in Civilization VI Gathering Storm. He was the seventh Prime Minister of Canada and is remembered today for his charismatic personality and his focus on Canadian unity and expansion. Wilfrid Laurier's leader ability is the last best West. Farms can be built in tundra and, after researching civil engineering, can also be built on tundra hills. All right, so you can have farms on both tundra and eventually tundra hills. Um, Obviously, I think we can already get an idea of what direction they're going to go with Canada. And that's going to be, they're going to be a very, you know, very at home in the Arctic and, and the polar regions of the map, which is really cool because there's only really one other civilization that has, you know, any sort of bonus to this area and that's Russia. Uh, and so it's going to give them, unless Russia's in the game, which even if they are, I mean, there are two poles. So um, it's going to give them a lot of land to expand to that most other people would just avoid entirely. And so the ability to build farms here, I mean, granted, these are still not going to be grassland farm tiles, but they're going to be able to sustain your, your civilization a little bit um, with, I'm sure, some of the other bonuses he's going to get as well to kind of keep you keep the food coming and some of the resources coming in as well. Uh, if you can settle in those those areas of the map that, again, most of the other civilizations just just really avoid. The cost of purchasing snow and tundra tiles is reduced, and he receives double extraction of all consumable resources, such as iron, on snow and tundra tiles. All right, so he's going to get reduced cost of buying tundra and snow tiles, which is good because unless they change anything with the algorithms, uh, civilizations kind of avoid expanding out to those snow tiles usually, like the cities themselves, sorry, uh, avoid those quite a bit. And so usually they'll expand to some of the grassland and water areas and stuff like that and leave those other ones for last. Well, in, in Canada's case, you're going to want to expand to those areas. So you might actually have to force purchase a few of those. And with them being quite a bit cheaper, uh, that's going to help out a lot. And then you get the additional resources from, from iron and things like that that you extract from there. Like it's a double, I believe. So that's a significant amount of resources, especially now that we know that resources are consumable as opposed to just a uh, do you have it or don't. And so being able to get a lot more of those means you can have a lot more to trade uh, as well as a lot more to obviously to, to, to uh, support the units that you have as well. Canada's unique improvement is the ice hockey rink. It can only be built in tundra or snow, and only one may be built per city. It provides appeal and amenities, plus culture based on adjacent snow and tundra tiles. All right, so we have the ice hockey rink here, which actually kind of reminds me a lot of the golf course for uh, Scotland, and that it's just, you know, it's one per city, um, and it gives you some very specific, you know, culture and, and bonuses and things like that, and amenity bonuses. Um, so it has a similar kind of vibe to it, although it, it, you're about to learn here in a second, there's some other enhancements that you can have to the ice hockey rink that are going to uh, possibly even lift it above the golf course in some ways. Um, but being able to, uh, to have a tile like this that you can plop down that gives you some extra culture, uh, extra amenities, uh, eventually extra tourism, stuff like that is really cool. Unlocking flight adds tourism, and unlocking professional sports adds production and food. So getting both production and food added into this tile, I mean, granted, it is only one tile per city, but you're going to basically be guaranteed to have this. I mean, you're going to have this in every city that you possibly can. Uh, and so we can even see right here, three food, two production, and six culture right now. That's a pretty good tile no matter where you're at. And this is a tundra tile, so this is actually a really cool deal. I, I like this one a lot. And we're actually, I think there's even one more bonus. It also provides culture if adjacent to a stadium building. Tend culture if you're adjacent to a stadium. So obviously here they did a really good job of putting their entertainment district right next to two of these. I mean, presumably you could even put you know several more around this, uh, have the stadium in there, and you're getting 10 culture from each of these plus the three food and the two production, as well as the tourism, obviously, as well. So this is actually a very valuable tile. And again, I think this is very much a leg up on the golf course that, uh, that Scotland gets. Canada's unique ability is four faces of peace. All right, let's take a look at this uh, screen for just a second and see what else we can see here. Um, we also, obviously, the four faces of peace she's about to talk about, uh, which they cannot declare war on city-states or surprise wars. Okay, she doesn't say the part about, I don't think she says the part about city-states. Maybe she does, but I remember her in the part about surprise wars here in a second. And so that's that's a pretty big deal. You have, I mean, you have to be able to have the, the denouncements to be able to have war with Canada, which... I guess kind of plays into their theme a little bit, 
but it is definitely a restriction to have because, you know, there's there's a lot of times where you might want to get that surprise war because everything lined up perfectly. They've got their their settler right on your border or, or you know, a worker or something else like that. And you want to be able to kind of surprise war de declaration and, and jump on that right away. Well, you can't do that as Canada. You're going to have to go through the process of doing the denouncement, waiting the several turns and, and then going after them with war with that. I guess if they denounce you. I guess you'll have that opening to declare war back. So I guess that's positive. Um, but also not being able to declare war in city states. That is interesting. Um, I mean, it's it's OK. I mean, honestly, most of the games that I play, I don't usually go to war with city states anyway, unless you're playing a specific, you know, um, civilization that cares about that, like, you know, say Germany, for example. Um, but not being able to declare war at all is an interesting take on this. Um, size, surprise wars cannot be declared on canon. Now, that's a positive. You know that you're you're completely safe unless somebody's denounced you. You know that as Canada, you are 100 percent safe, uh, which is a really, really good place to be. That means as soon as they denounce you, sure, you got to start kind of preparing yourselves and making sure you're ready for that. But if you keep everybody else around you happy, you don't got to worry about those kind of surprise war decorations, which is going to be really key at the higher levels, such as deity or, or, you know, up that high. You know, it's because you're going to be able to maybe not protect yourself quite as much as you feel like you needed to normally with other civilizations unless you're being denounced. So again, you keep people happy. Maybe you don't have a reason to have an army much at all after that anyway. So it's an interesting take. Um, for every 100% tourism, you earn one diplomatic favor and receive 100% 100 diplomatic favor from successfully completing an emergency or scored competition. Okay, we're going to get into that here in a second. I kind of wanted to see if there's anything else here that I want to jump in on. Let's look at the ice hockey rink to make sure there's nothing here that I missed with regards to that. Unlocks the ability, ability to construct an ice hockey rink unique to Canada. Perfect. Plus one amenity and plus one culture for each adjacent tundra. So that's, uh, again, we saw we can get up to six uh, six from that with the uh, the tundra all around it. Uh, tundra hills, snow, and oh, and snow hills. So any anything that's Arctic at all, you're going to be able to get a bonus from adjacency. Provides tourism from culture once flight unlocked. That That's pretty typical. And then plus two food and production once the professional uh, sports civic is unlocked. And then plus four culture if adjacent to a stadium. So again, we saw that really, really valuable tile that is uh, that's really going to give you a lot. And then plus two appeal. That's, that's a lot of appeal to get as well. So this is incredibly good. Um, a unique uh, improvement that you have here. Again, you can only have one per city, but it's very powerful as well. Uh, last best west. Uh, we see the farms uh, after civil engineering is unlocked. Farms can be built on tundra hills. Reduces the cost of purchasing by 50%. That's pretty good. And then 100% extraction rate of accumulated resource on snow, snow hills, tundra hills, and tundra tiles. So again, very much playing into that theme of snow, snow hills, tundra hills, and tundra tiles. That, that, that's, that's their... They're kind of stomping grounds as far as this is concerned. Uh, and then we'll get into the mounting and stuff like that here in a moment. So let's go ahead and continue. They cannot declare surprise wars or be the target of one. They also receive extra favor for successfully completing an emergency and additional favor based on their tourism. Okay, so additional favor based on the tourism is pretty cool too. So, I mean, obviously Canada is really gearing themselves up towards, I'm assuming, a dip diplomatic victory because they're going to be getting a lot of favor, not going to be going to war with a lot of people, um, kind of being off in the side, you know, up in the tundra, you know, away from everybody and kind of doing their own thing. And so really getting the favor from uh, completing these uh, aid requests and and getting more from tourism, stuff like that, that's really going to help them play the diplomatic victory game, which is the first, this is probably the first civilization we've seen of the three so far that's really, really geared towards that, you know, one of the new kind of bonuses here in uh, Gathering Storm, which in this case is the addition of the uh, the diplomatic victory, or should I should say the re-addition, because obviously we've had diplomatic victory in the past. So being able to have this civilization very much geared towards that is, is really cool to see. Their unique unit is the Mountie. This light cavalry unit has the ability to create a national park. It also receives a strength bonus when fighting close to any national park and an even higher strength bonus when fighting near Canadian owned national parks. All right, so you have another unit that can build national parks. Obviously, in this case, I'm assuming you probably wouldn't bother building um, the uh, the park, not the park ranger. What is it? The uh, mind blank, the name. My apologies. You're going to definitely please leave comments below of the name of the unit that makes national parks normally. But being able to uh, to have the Canadian national parks here, not only is it another unit they can make those and obviously not consume itself because it's obviously still running around doing its thing, but also get a, pro uh, a defensive bonus or I guess just a strength bonus in general uh, while being near those. And if you go to attack somebody else who happens to have national parks, uh, America, for example, uh, you're going to be able to get a strength bonus there as well. Of course, although America does also get a defensive bonus being on their continent. So I guess those cross each other out a little bit. But this is an interesting bonus. Again, I'm not really seeing like war, like heavy, you know, Canada necessarily. 
But if you pick a fight on Canada, Canada's going to be able to take care of its own, I think. Uh, and it's not saying that they can't go to war, uh, but it does seem like they're very much more geared towards, you know, come at me and, and I'll defend myself. But otherwise, I'm going to be your best friend, you know, as long as you let me be. So I think it's kind of a cool deal. Obviously, you're going to want to have as many uh, national parks as you can get. Um, I don't know if there's going to be any ease of restrictions on getting national parks. I, I feel like this particular tile we're, seeing, tile we're seeing here, is the appeal here high enough to normally have a national park? Maybe it is. I feel like... I feel like normally you wouldn't have one. Is this is there some sort of extra bonus that they have to being able to put national parks in more places or something? Or is this maybe I'm, maybe I'm misunderstanding the uh, appeal here? I haven't honestly settled a lot of tundra tiles, so maybe the appeal in tundra trails is a lot higher than uh, than I'm remembering. But um, no, I think it's going to be cool to see more uh, more usage of national parks. I think it's an underused mechanic, quite frankly. Um, you usually use this for going for a, a tourism victory, or if you're American, trying to get some more appeal for for whatever reason. Uh, obviously, usually tourism there as well. Um, but for Canada to be able to pop these down, you know, a lot of places as well, that's going to be really cool to see. Uh, be able to take advantage again of a somewhat underused uh, mechanic, possibly. As Canada, you can take advantage of the icy landscape that most other civilizations will ignore. But should you fall under attack, your Mounties are powerful defenders. Canada is built for a strong culture victory and can make a good run at a diplomatic victory as well. All right. So this is our first view of the World Congress screen, uh, at least as far as I know. I mean, at least in, in these first impression videos or, or these um, the, the videos they've been putting out for the civilizations, they might have done something in a live stream that I might have missed. I don't think so. But I think this is our first view of this. Either way, this is really cool. I mean, this looks really clean. Uh, I like it a lot. Um, you get to see all the different favor that everybody has over here has over here on the left side. It looks like here we're um, select an outcome for this resolution. The chosen player gains two diplomatic victory points, or chosen player loses one diplomatic victory point. So obviously here they're trying to use some of their favor to get some diplomatic victory points for themselves. Um, I'm trying to see if we see anything here about what the diplomatic victory would entail let's see you must decide how to best exploit the opportunities available to you in the world congress wield your accumulated diplomatic favor to vote on proposals that are important to you and your people gain score by competing completing the training athletics project which is similar to the kind of the olympics uh that we've seen in the past maintaining stadiums maintaining aquatic centers that's kind of cool uh during this emergency oh this is uh the world games i'm sorry i mis misread that we have a competition going on here that in order to get points towards the competition you complete the training athletics project. Okay, that's the project that you can get in your city. Maintaining stadiums, maintaining aquatic centers, which obviously Canada's going to have a lot of stadiums. Um, let's see what else. Plus two tourism. The player with the highest score receives plus two tourism for each campus. Now, we don't get to see the rest of what this bonus is for the World Games here, um, but getting tourism from each campus is pretty good, especially if you're going to go for a tourism victory. So, no, I mean, again, I don't know what diplomatic victory means. I mean, is it get X number of diplomatic victory points? Is it get a uh, percentage of vic diplomatic victory points based on how many people are in the game? Who knows what that is? Maybe we'll see some more of that uh, in some of the live streams and other things coming up. But I think this first view of this screen is pretty cool to see. Be sure to join as many emergencies as possible to take full advantage of their diplomatic strengths. All right. So obviously we wanted to join as many emergencies as we can, help out as many people as we can, really just get as much of that uh, diplomatic uh, uh, favor as we possibly can to be able to, again, go for these diplomatic victory things or, or just really kind of control the World Congress in a way that we want it to 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 be favorable to, to Canada. Uh, and so I think this is a really important thing and a really good thing to see. So um, World Games obviously passed in the screen. Diplomatic victory passed. It says diplomatic victory passed. I don't think the diplomatic victory itself passed, but I think specifically the uh, getting some points towards that diplomatic victory seems to have passed. Uh, Congress reconvenes in 24 turns. So you're going to have one every X number of turns. That's pretty typical from like, if you remember from Civ Five. no points earned towards great people of this class, great general. Oh, that's an interesting thing that you can restrict getting points towards great people. That's that's kind of interesting. I'm hoping to see a lot more of these World Congress types of things in the coming videos as well uh, and to really understand more about what this World Congress and the diplomatic victory does. But again, getting a little bit of view here is, is pretty cool. Will you guide the world with your sunny ways from the Great White North? How will you lead Canada in Sid Meier's Civilization VI Gathering Storm? All right, Canada is going to be a lot of fun, I think. And again, it's really going to take advantage of some tiles that most of the other civilizations tend to ignore. Uh, so being able to get up there in the tundra and just really just thrive in the tundra. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying you don't care at all about some of the, 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 you know, maybe more kind of greener pastures, if you will, but 
if you don't like if you settle a few of those types of cities and all that's left is the tundra, more than likely you're the one that's going to get to settle in those tundra places because your your uh, enemy civilizations, unless you're playing against Russia, are most likely not going to want to settle there. So you kind of save those areas as special candidate only places until, you know, some of the other places maybe fill up. Um, but obviously you're going to want as many of those tundra places for your ice hockey rinks uh, as possible. So, you know, it's kind of a mix and match of, of the two. You want some tundra probably in just about every city so you can at least have the ice hockey uh, rinks as well. But I think this is a cool city, civilization. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to having a civilization that is geared towards that diplomatic victory and playing towards that as well, because I think the diplomatic victory uh, is going to be a lot of fun, uh, another way to kind of achieve victory. And I think it's going to be kind of cool. I, I like, look, I like to play a lot of domination games, but every once in a while you want to play a pacifist game. And Canada seems very much geared towards playing the pacifist route, especially since they can't declare a surprise war. So again, I think it's a great civilization. I think it really, really plays towards Canada's strengths and, and really fits the theme of Canada really well. Tell me what you think. Uh, let me know if you disagree or, or what your, your thoughts are. And please let me know if you like this video or dislike, whichever. So that way I know if I, you know, need to continue to make some more of these or, or changes or whatever. So again, I do appreciate you watching. I'm really looking forward to the next civilization. Each one of these civilizations has been even more exciting than the, the previous one. Uh, so I'm really hoping you guys join me again next week for yet another civilization reveal. So thank you again and goodbye.